Hello, boys and girls. I'm your Peter Pan storyteller. When you hear this sound, turn the page. This is the story of Peter Rabbit. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits who were named Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They all wore bright little jackets and shoes with silver buckles on them. One day, the mother said to them, I'm going to the baker's to get some brown bread and buns. You little ones may go into the fields or down the lane to play, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. As soon as their mother left, Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who are good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very, very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. Mmm, look at all this nice lettuce and radishes. So Peter Rabbit wandered around, gathering up a lot of nice fresh vegetables. Well, that's the kind of food that rabbits like. But just as he went around the end of the cucumber patch, who should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Uh-oh, there's that mean farmer. I must run away quickly. But, oh dear me, I, I seem to be lost. I can't find my way back to the gate. As Peter scampered away, Palmer McGregor ran after him, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! I'll catch you, you naughty rabbit! And then my good wife will cook you up into a rabbit stew! But Peter ran faster and faster. He might have gotten away altogether if he had not run straight into a gooseberry bush and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. Little Peter Rabbit gave himself up for lost, and he shed big tears. And then up came Mr. McGregor. Uh -huh. Now I've got you caught at last, Peter Rabbit. But Peter wriggled out just in time. And leaving his jacket behind him, he rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a sprinkling can. Oh my, that was a close call. This sprinkling can would be a wonderful place to hide if it didn't have so much water in it. Farmer McGregor was sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed. Perhaps hiding underneath a flower pot. And then an awful thing happened. From sitting in that cold water, Peter Rabbit had to sneeze. <coughs> oh, Mr. McGregor was after him in no time at all. And then Peter jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. <coughs> And he was safe for the moment. Peter sat down to rest a little bit. He was very, very tired. He was out of breath from running and was trembling with fright because he had not the least idea of which way to go. I must find my way out of this garden. That mean farmer may catch me yet. And oh, my poor mother would be so sad if I didn't ever come home ever again. Peter Rabbit began to wander about, going lippity-lippity and looking all around to find the garden gate. He found a locked door in the wall, but there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to our family in the wood. Please, Mrs. Mouse, can you show me the way to the garden gate? I'm lost and I'm so afraid of Farmer McGregor. But Mrs. Mouse had such a large mouthful of peas and beans that she couldn't answer. She only shook her little head and scampered away. <gasps> Poor little Peter Rabbit. He tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. He began to cry again, a very quiet little cry, so he wouldn't reveal his hiding place. Oh, my. Oh, my. As he went back towards the tool shed, suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. 
Peter scuttled underneath the bushes. And he held his breath. He was panting so hard from running, he thought maybe Mr. McGregor might hear him breathing. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out and jumped upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. Uh-oh. There's Farmer McGregor holding onions. But his back is toward me. Oh, my. There, just beyond is the garden gate. But how can I ever reach it without being seen? Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. <gasps> but Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner. Stop, you little rascal! I won't have you stealing my fresh green vegetables! Oh, if I can only make that gate, then I'll be safe! And he ran as if his life depended upon it, which actually it did. And he slipped underneath the gate, into the wood outside of the garden, and was safe. Peter Rabbit never stopped running or looked behind him until he got home. Oh, I'm so tired. I think I'll just lie down here on the nice soft sand and close my eyes. His mother was busy cooking, but she wondered what Peter had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that he had lost in two weeks. But she let him sleep until dinner time. When the evening meal was ready, little Peter opened his eyes and said, Mother, I don't feel very well. That's because you were naughty and disobeyed me. But she didn't punish him. Because his frightening experience was punishment enough. And Peter promised never to disobey his mother again. And that's the tale of Peter Rabbit and his adventures in Farmer McGregor's garden. <laughs>